We are live. Welcome to Moon Knight, Episode 4, Thoughts. This episode is called The Tomb. I love that the camera starts upside down, gradually turns to right side up in the first shot of the episode. Layla getting a chance to shine. She chooses to go with stealth, then triggery. It's super effective. Very guerrilla attack. Guerrilla tactic. She blows up their bullets with a flare. Clever. Not sure I love that one insert shot of the bullets to indicate that she decided she was going to use that against them. I get what they're going for. I think there should have been a little bit more connective tissue. Or none at all. What? You guys made a deal that he would disappear from my life. And you didn't think I should have been made aware of that? She makes a good point. I really appreciate that Mark is concerned about Layla. He's not whining about how it's unfair to him that Steven is in control. He just wants her to be safe. If I need a recipe for a protein shake or something, I'll call you. Metabolism burn. And Layla almost kisses Steven, but for she can, he tells her that Mark is trying to protect her. Not because he doesn't want to kill, kiss her, but because he feels it's unfair to keep the truth from her. Excellent acting. And then they do kiss. And one of the altars punches Steven. Yeah, Mark would be upset. If... Her final avatar was a pharaoh. For a little bit there, I thought the that theory about the time-traveling Kang pharaoh might be right. It's too bad we did. I, I mean, there's no way that Alexander the Great was a time-traveling king. Is that fresh blood? Chunky meaty bits. So that's pretty intense. I guess they're seeing how far they can push it for Deadpool? What are they shooting at? Hide. Yeah, good call. That sounds like a stealth level to me. So that zombie priest chittering sonar thing is removing the organs of the guy who either only just died seconds ago or is still alive. Did we see him die for sure? Like, we see his his face and his eyes are moving, and then I, I'm not sure we saw them stop moving, so there's some chance this is a vivisection. Forget Deadpool. I think they're working their way up to a remake of The Thing. I asked for another supernatural creature rather than another jackal. I'm extremely happy I did that, because that blue thing is awesome. Super creepy. Steven? If you're done with the Thing remake by way of the Flying remake, can I interest you in a remake of the cave? And Layla moves throughout the cave, and a hand gropes out at her. Yeah. And Layla gets pulled. Layla gets pulled back away from the camera, which is, I think, at this point, her signature move. Oh, never mind. Her signature move is defeating overwhelming odds with appropriate use of flares. Is that why Lara Croft always brings flares to to shove into the eye socket of creatures? I think I would have liked those games more if you if you could do it. Those games were fun. I'm just kidding. And Mark is angry with Steven for the kiss, but he does appreciate that Steven told the truth to Layla. He never told you the truth about your father. He told me enough. He told me he died. No. I am definitely not your father. That would make absolutely no sense. Seriously, Arthur knows just what to say to manipulate people. He's really, really good at that. So go ahead. The floor is yours. The 5% of the floor that remained. Yes, I realized that the episode was probably already making that joke, visually. Sorry, Mr. the Great. And Stephen opens Mr. the Great's mouth. If there's a silver tongue in there, that's really going to crack me up. Arthur does know a lot of details about Layla's father and their relationship. Are you done? That just doesn't have the same effect if it's not coming from a teacher who recently cut a finger off a student. And the Ushapti goes to us. Can you hear me? Alexander. God, I hope not. I mean, that does bring up... Like, this is, this is a show where living things that are trapped can hear. So, it's, it's, yeah... Yeah, sometimes Steven's not the, the brightest bulb in the 
cutlery thing. Yeah, I was trying to go for a mixed metaphor. Mark insists that he didn't kill her father, which I guess maybe means Jake. Some some people are saying that it could be my partner got greedy and executed everyone at the gravesite. Some people are saying that his partner could be Jake. You know, after all, there are stories where someone tries to, to kill one of their additional personalities. And Layla blames Mark for bringing a killer to her father. That's the reason we met. You just had a guilty conscience. If the MCU shows keep this up, they're eventually going to have enough for group therapy. First Bucky, now Mark. And Arthur arrives with a dozen armed men. Arthur tells Mark about when the moon god stopped talking to him. Really great scenes. Badass Mark manages to take out three guys with the axe thing, but then Arthur shoots him. I do appreciate it's not one of those scenes where he somehow manages to take out a ridiculous amount. I mean, he could as Moon Knight, but he can't as just Mark Spector. I can't save anyone who won't save themselves. Okay, Zoidberg. And Mark disappears into the sunken place. And... Dr. Steve, you know, we're now an institution. Dr. Stephen Wright is a character in an, in a, you know, very low budget Indiana Jones ripoff. Mark and Layla are both in the institution. Layla cares about bingo, so she clearly isn't herself. I guess maybe it's supposed to be that that's what they really get into instead of archaeology. And Mark looks at his reflection, hoping it's Stephen. And, you know, the reflection doesn't move, and we later see that's probably because he's in the institution elsewhere. Falls over, his foot attached to the wheelchair, and he was holding a Moon Knight toy, which apparently was like, uh, uh, what's it called? Someone said that was a Skeletor toy, and I could see that, yeah. So this is supposed to explain that everything leading up to this was all in his head, which is something that the comics toy with. And the movie's called Tomb Buster, so it's like an asylum remake of Tomb Raider. I see what you did there, Marvel. And Arthur is working at the institution. Remember, you're only sedated because of your own behavior. You blew up my car. I really love that car. Arthur still has the judging cane, but it looks slightly different. And his office, someone pointed out, it looks like the place where the cult was living, but only like painted white, which, you know, institution color. I should probably not say anything negative about white walls since I have them myself and they're clearly visible in this shot. No, I'm not, I'm not saying anything negative. It's... I, uh, I read it's like a calming color, and that's why they use it in institutions, and that makes a lot of sense. You want to eliminate anything that could upset patients, and yeah. I can't help you if you don't, if you won't help yourself. And a lot of Egyptian artifacts in Arthur's office, which is also supposed to help explain how he came up with these fantasies and Mark breaks the window but the two cops are now orderly yes I realized we saw them earlier in the this this was where I happened to mention Stephen was in a sarcophagus and we get the parent trap shot of both of them next to each other facing each other but since technology has greatly advanced it's not just a split screen I love that despite its appearance the big hippo god has a normal voice and Mark and Steven both scream. Considering the diet of actual hippos, I sure hope that's not a hungry, hungry hippo. You know, if the Mummy remake had been handled more like this episode, I think the Dark Universe may have actually lasted at least a little bit longer. 
And some people think that the institution is actually in the overworld, over void. Not a word I'm used to saying, so it's going to take a little practice. Where the gods reside, which would explain the hippo god just walking around like that. This is the first time that we have seen someone, we've seen one of the gods just like normally in this show's universe the god is only visible to its avatar and i'm almost certain you can't accidentally be an avatar because you have to agree to be an avatar or be part, be a member of the same you know be, be a separate identity in the same body as someone who agreed mark specifically agreed and arthur agreed before him you know so there's no way that they could accidentally be i want to say her name is Toweret you know, her, uh, yeah. And now that we've heard two different gods speak, we know that, like, when, like, you know, it's it's F. Meyer Abraham's voice for Khonshu, so he's either, like, try hard, really trying to sound tough, or, you know, it's possible it's just his normal voice, but, like, other gods, like, she sounds like a, a young woman, you know, I, I would, like, maybe in her 20s or 30s, like, she has a very chipper voice, she, like, you know, it, I, I just, yeah, I, I like that it's apparently, you know, the gods are completely different ages, and, and, like, and she's way less aggressive than, like, Khonshu is always, you know, he's, he's, uh, like, uh, what, what is it Homer Simpson says about God? He's always mad, you know, and, yeah, so I, I appreciate that just, and, and you know, she, she smiles with her with her hippo teeth and, and, like, the ears make a little movement and just, yeah. Now, I think it was the IGN review that said they knew the audience wouldn't believe that everything was all in Steven's head, so before the episode is over, they do reveal there is clearly something else going on, wisely so. Yeah, I, I would definitely say, like, let's hypothetically say they could basically have chosen to end this episode before Mark breaks the window. Or maybe when the orderlies show up and grab him first. You know, it could just cut their credits and then we we don't see, you know, but instead, you know, he, he manages to get away from them. He gets out in the hallway and, like, things, like turn slightly there you know they don't go from like the the vertical doesn't become the horizontal but it does tilt a little bit you know so okay there's something else going on clearly this is not yeah and you know then the sarcophagus guy i think is the plural of that yeah i think i could be wrong and the the you know first first one sarcophagus with Stephen inside, and the other one was shaking violently. A lot of people think that might be Jake in there. Which how did they manage to convey? You know, okay, this this one sarcophagus shake. You know, that's that's fine. That's someone harmless basically. And this other one, ooh, there's someone violent in that shaking sarcophagus. Like, but yeah with 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 good filmmaking that's how but but yeah i th i think there's a there's a pretty good chance of that and yeah the you know we we've yet to find out if Tawaret was like looking for them or is just happy to meet them or something but certainly she moved with purpose you know she wasn't just standing around she was like marching down the the hall and then opens the doors and is definitely happy to see them that's not, you know, that's not the face, voice, or general body language of someone who's about to, like, or, or unless they're a really good liar, I guess. But yeah, it seems like she's going to, to help them in, in some way, and yeah. Yeah, really excited to see what happens next. You know, there's, so there's two episodes left. Yeah, two two more episodes I am really, really excited to to find out what happens. Yeah, I forget. 
Yeah, I, I want to say it was Nerd Soup who said something like that they, they really thought it would... Did I already say, did I say that in the last... I'll, uh, I'll, I won't spend forever finding out, but I'm just going to see if... Or, or were they saying it about this episode? Anyway, Nerd Soup said that they're really hoping that the show wouldn't just end with... Amit versus the rest of the gods in a big CGI battle. I agree, that would be really a, a letdown after all this buildup, but yeah, uh, fingers crossed that that's not going to happen. And yeah, I it was, it was a really great twist. This is, as far as I understand, this was the episode, you know, the first four episodes were previewed early for critics. This is the last thing that the critics saw. So, yeah, I can understand, you know, several of them mentioned, you know, there's going to be a really big a cliffhanger in, in episode four. And, yeah, it's it's really cool. Like, I kind of felt like they moved a little bit away from the Total Recall feel that, I, I want to say, maybe Sean Chandler Talks Movies, I think is his channel name. The The... You know, he described it when he had watched these four episodes. And, you know, and yeah, for the, the first episode, I definitely see it. You know, suddenly Stephen wakes up in bed and he's like, oh, wow, I guess that was a very vivid dream, but okay. And then he realizes he lost two days and we come to realize, no, 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 all that stuff actually happened. And then, like, yeah, the episode before this one didn't, like, it... it I would say episode three, we basically accepted, no, what, what we're seeing is actually happening. But then this ending, you know, clearly there is something, like, we can't, we can't trust everything we see for sure, uh, you know, but, yeah. Really, really excited to see where they go from here. Yeah, so, I will catch you next week.